Welcome to our next lesson, Simple Product Sourcing. And here's what we're going to be covering in this video. Why sourcing products is now easier than it ever has been. How to source products from the USA or EU. Sourcing products from China. Our simple sourcing system. And then some common pitfalls that you can avoid. Over the past several years, sourcing new products has become even easier for several reasons. However, the primary reason is because of Alibaba.com. Virtually any product that you could ever want to have manufactured is available on that one website. Now, Rich Henderson showed you how to use Alibaba in our previous video in order to get some estimated profit margins, but we're going to start digging in and using that in more detail in our upcoming videos. Supplier competition has also increased, which is good for us because it makes them hungry for our business. This results in much more competitive pricing and lower MOQs. Suppliers have also become much more familiar with Amazon's FBA shipping processes, and therefore they know how to make this work and make it much easier on you. Alibaba's also gotten much better at keeping out some of the shadier sellers who may be out there just looking to make a quick buck and take advantage of you. It doesn't mean that you still have to keep an eye out for it, and we're going to show you how to do that later on, but it's not as much of a worry as it used to be. And finally, we've developed an extremely simple sourcing process that anyone can follow. Where you should source from will depend primarily on the types of products that you're sourcing. For health, beauty, and cleaning products, you'll want to source in the USA or possibly the EU if you live there using Google to do your searches. Health and beauty are pretty much any products that go inside your body or on your skin. And we've added cleaning to this category because cleaning products can readily be found available and made in the United States. Some examples are creams, gels, vitamins, and supplements. And the USA does have the largest number of suppliers and products of these types. But if you do live in the EU, it still makes sense to at least check over there because you might be able to find a local supplier and not have to worry about importing them. For pretty much everything else, you'll want to source outside of the USA or EU using Alibaba.com. This means they're most likely made in China because these products are usually too expensive to have manufactured in the USA or the EU. So how do you actually do this? Well, I'm going to walk you through the entire process in upcoming videos, but let's quickly go over at a high level how it's done. If you're sourcing for health or beauty products in the USA or EU, you simply do an internet search. You would type in the type of product you're looking for, plus the terms either private label or manufacturer behind it. Then you would reach out to the suppliers you see using the contact templates that we're going to be giving you in the upcoming lessons. Now, there is another way that you can look for products to source inside the United States, and that's to look for private label trade shows in the USA that are near you that you might be able to attend. These can be great ways to be exposed to several different products and manufacturers all in one location, all looking for private label sellers like you. However, we don't recommend this for your first product. This is really best suited when you're already established with at least one successful product. And the reason for that is that the manufacturers there will take you much more seriously if they know that you already have a brand up and selling. And secondly, we also don't want anything to hold you up from getting your first product live. And these different private label trade shows are spread out all throughout the year. Now, outside of the USA is actually easier. You use Alibaba.com. You'll also use the exact same supplier contact templates as we're going to use for the USA and EU. Alibaba has manufacturers from all over the world. Now, primarily they'll be from China, but they also have suppliers from Pakistan, Taiwan, India, and many, many other countries as well. The entire process can be broken down into these following steps. You select the product that you wish to source. You search online for suppliers, either Google or Alibaba. You contact five to 10 suppliers and ask for certain things such as pricing, MLQ levels, production time, and packaging capabilities, and we'll tell you exactly what to ask for in the upcoming lessons. You then order and evaluate two to three samples from different suppliers. You choose the best supplier based upon the product quality and the price and the other things that we asked for earlier. Then you work with the supplier on packaging and branding. And finally, you place your inventory order. Let's finish out this lesson by going over some common pitfalls that you'll want to try and avoid throughout this entire process. The first is basically fear. The fear that your suppliers won't want to deal with you because you're new or that you might say something wrong. There's absolutely nothing to worry about. These suppliers are simply people like you and I, and they're people looking to grow their business. And they know that one of the easiest ways to do that is to bring in new customers, which is exactly what we are to them. Besides, 
we're going to tell you exactly what to say to them so there's absolutely nothing to worry about. No matter how excited we are to get our products up and selling on Amazon, you never want to skip the important part of ordering samples. Being able to hold and feel and see the product before placing an order is a critical part of the process that you never want to skip. You also want to make sure that you focus on product quality. Selling a product with poor quality is a surefire way to have problems for your company and brand down the road. You also want to make sure that you contact more than just one supplier. Even though we'll only be ordering initially from one supplier, it's always a good idea to have a few that you've contacted before just in case something happens and you want to change suppliers down the road. Now, having multiple suppliers you're talking with also helps you during negotiations. And you should never be afraid to negotiate. Hardly ever is their first offer to you your final offer. Finally, you don't want to underestimate the total amount of shipping time that it'll take to get your product from your supplier to you or to Amazon. Oftentimes, they'll tell you that it takes about 21 or 22 days for an ocean container to be shipped overseas, and that's correct. However, there's always time on the front end and on the back end that you need to take into account. So that's it for this lesson. Head on over to the next one, where I'm going to show you how to set yourself up with a professional-looking business profile.